Hey traders, Rocky here. And in this update, we're gonna talk about sort of yes on one hand, it's onward and upward, except for what? The issue now is going to be, right, we were able to take these uh, all time highs out. And I will say that in terms of average volume, it wasn't like we did it on high volume, but you know, it, there's something about volume that, we, that I think needs to be discussed. And that is the way in which volume used to behave up until about the mid 90s and the way volume behaved after the mid 90s. And what was the distinction? What is the distinction? Retail traders, the, the growth of retail trading has really been surging uh, and sometimes more accelerating at certain times than others. But retail trader has really been a force since the mid 90s. And then even more recently with no commission trading and so forth, it surged again. Retail traders do comprise a lot of the movement that we see. It's not like it was before the mid 90s where it was pretty much institutions were pretty much dictating how um, you know, the volume was perceived, which means that low volume moves oftentimes can entice more involvement because momentum traders are going to like to see the break of the all time high. And because it was on low volume, that means, well, the perception can be or the 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 way that I can look at this data and say, well, did we have high participation? Do we have a lot of opinion? That's what volume reflects. So did we have that today? And I can't say that we did. So there could be some higher highs in our future as we go into early next week. In fact, sometimes, not always, but sometimes the Friday session ends strongly. The idea is you'll see buyers take the baton and continue to rally on Monday. Now, that sounds great. That sounds like, okay, Rob, I, I guess that could make some sense. I've seen that phenomena. Low volume breakouts are not necessarily failure waiting to happen. But you said that there's an, there's an exception. Well, what's the problem? So onward and upward, except for this. What's the this? Powell. Next week on Wednesday, we have the FOMC statement you know, meeting, right? Uh, day two of the meeting, of course, and the press conference. We're going to hear from Jerome Powell at 2 p.m. and then again, 2.30. The statement is, is going to be very important. The press conference probably even more so because this is the first time we're hearing from Jerome Powell. We're hearing from the FOMC with the statement since the message tweak of June, which really trounced the reflation trade, uh, absolutely put a dagger in, in the XLI and IYT. And now the market's going to say, well, are they kind of cranking up the volume on that messaging? Or are they going to keep it pretty smooth or even, you know, drop back a little bit, right? And so what is concerning is that we don't know how the market wants to position itself in front of next Wednesday's meeting, because up until the June 16 meeting, it was a pretty simple, highly probable rhythm. Don't be short into the event, but probably short in the aftermath of the event. So people rallied into Powell, would take profits and start to pay bearishly, quite literally, as he started opening his mouth. But that was when we knew this was an accommodative FOMC. So now that that messaging has shifted, we're still trying to understand, all right, does this market really want to be long? into Wednesday or what might we see some profit taking uh, Tuesday or even Wednesday afternoon before 2 p.m. Eastern. And that's what the big question mark that hangs over this uh, all time high move uh, in the S&P and in the NASDAQ. That's what the big question mark is. Uh, I, for one, if there's anywhere that you're thinking that you would like to put a short position on in front of Powell, I think the Dow makes a lot of sense because the Dow is not in a trend and it's right at resistance levels that it has fatigued from. And if there is a chance for a move lower, why not short the most vulnerable of the three major indices? And so that's the way I'm looking at this. I would welcome a pullback. I'm not going to be short on the pullback with the NASDAQ or the S&P, but I would love to see some weakness because that's going to allow us to do what? Oh, well, the very same thing that we did on Monday of this week. Come on back to the wave. The water's fine. Give me a pullback and we will get long once again. And this applies to the S&P as well. So that's the game plan for next week. Be aware of the economic 
calendar what Powell could mean to significant sentiment and momentum. This is still a double green NASDAQ uptrend. This is still a double green S&P uptrend. But if there's any vulnerability, I think, interestingly enough, we are at overbought resistance in the context of a non-trending market in the Dow. I'll see you next week. Hey traders, Raggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.